progressively more disturbing stories, okay. and at the end of each of them, I will share the photo or photos that are famously associated with them. But before we get into today's stories, if you're a fan of the strange, dark, and mysterious delivered in story format, then you come to the right place because that's all we do, and we upload one or two times every week. So if that's of interest to you, please offer to give the like button a massage, but apply too little pressure so the experience is unsatisfactory. Also, please subscribe to our channel and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of our weekly uploads. All right, let's get into today's stories. On August 15, 2003, 41-year-old veteran construction worker Ron Hunt was part of a crew that was building a house in Reno, Nevada. On that particular day, Ron knew before he could do anything else on the job site, the first thing he needed to do was drill a couple of large holes in the ceiling of one of the rooms in this house. And so as soon as he got to the job site that morning, he went in the back of his truck and pulled out a six-foot-tall stepladder and a drill and then walked into that particular room. Once inside, he opened up a stepladder and placed it where he wanted it and then he tested his drill by squeezing the trigger a couple of times and so once he knew that worked he climbed up the ladder a couple of steps not to the very top but just a couple of steps and began punching holes in the ceiling with this drill now at first these holes were very easy to punch through but when he got down and moved the ladder to another section of this room where he also needed holes in the ceiling when he got up there he could not get the drill to go through the ceiling and he didn't really get it because he knew there was nothing behind the ceiling that would stop the drill from going through and it was just wood so it really should be going through and so he decided he just needed a little bit of extra leverage he needed oh to really God. press on the back of this drill while he's pulling the trigger and so instead of standing on the second or third rung of the six foot tall step ladder he walked to the very top of the ladder the kind of dangerous section you're not supposed to stand on on any ladder and from there he was in a better position to really push this drill into the ceiling and so he gets in position and kind of feels like the ladder's fairly stable. And then he lines up this drill where he wants it. He begins squeezing the trigger. And at the same time, he really pushes with all that extra leverage into the ceiling. And as he does that, he feels the drill starting to go into the wood. But at the same time, he's pushing so hard that he's not realizing he's pushing down with his feet at a bit of an angle. And at some point, he pushes too hard and he causes the ladder to spill out from underneath him. Ron instinctively tried to throw the drill away from him, which is a common practice amongst construction workers. You don't want to land on your gear. It could hurt you. But he wasn't able to throw the drill far enough away from him. And even worse, the drill, when it hit the ground, basically right underneath him, it landed on its back with the drill bit pointing straight up into the air. And so when he fell down face first, his right eye socket landed directly on the drill. And so this 18 inch long one and a half inch in diameter drill bit impales his head goes right through his eyeball goes through his skull and punctures out the back of his head and so ron he hits the ground but he's conscious and so without even rolling over he just reaches up with his hands and he feels the base of this drill and then he traces to the drill bit and he feels it going into his eye and then he feels around the back of his head and he feels the rest of the drill coming out of his skull and at that point he just starts screaming the only other worker on the job site at the time was this man named Forrest and Forrest who was in a separate part of the job site he hears Ron screaming and so he runs over he goes in the room and he sees Ron who's now standing up cradling the drill base the bit the 18 inch bit is still poking through his head and so Ron is looking at Forrest and then turns to the side to show him that he's been fully impaled by this thing and Forrest is totally horrified at what he's seeing he can't believe Ron is even alive but then Forrest jumps into action he rips his shirt off runs over to Ron and kind of wraps it around his head to try to control the bleeding a little bit and then he tells Ron to stay where he is and then Forrest ran out of the job site ran about a thousand feet away to the nearest house and he was able to use their phone to call paramedics the paramedics arrive in an ambulance a few minutes later and they find Ron sitting next to Forrest just with this drill still in his face Ron is very obviously in shock because he's not making any sound he's totally conscious but he's just kind of staring blankly holding on to this thing and so the paramedics they go over and they detach the drill base from the drill bit so all that's left 
is the actual 18 inch rod that's been pushed through his head and then they take ron via ambulance to a local hospital and from there they actually fly him in a helicopter to a bigger hospital that can handle this kind of injury and so when he arrives at this larger hospital they rush him immediately to the operating room and at first the surgeons attempted to cut off either end of this bit the part that's sticking out the front of his eye and the part that's sticking out the back of his head but they realized once they did that there would still be this huge piece of bit that was stuck in his skull and that would obviously be a huge problem and so after thinking about it they decided their best bet was just to unscrew the bit from his head and so they gave him some morphine and then over the next couple of hours the doctors slowly twisted this piece of metal until it finally unwound itself out of his skull and apparently as they were doing that ron who was so high on painkillers was cracking jokes about how somebody needs to come in here and take a picture of me i probably look so great and so miraculously ron would survive and he would not even be paralyzed the worst thing that happened to him is he lost the sight in his right eye but all things considered ron is okay with that the surgeons would tell ron that the only reason he didn't die or get paralyzed is because when that drill bit went into his skull it kind of pressed his brain aside side as it passed through had it punctured his brain when it went through that almost certainly would have killed him but by some unbelievably slim chance it did not and he survived here is ron's x-ray oh Ooh, that's the thumbnail that's the thumbnail here's a good chance now coming for charleston the advantage for the battery before we get into the next story, I want to talk about today's sponsor. Ever since I started this channel, I have been shocked. Oh, I'm sorry, you guys. I need a moment. I need a moment. That's the thumbnail that I saw on Mr. Ballin' channel on this video right here. Okay. To the number of home invasion stories I've come across where the victims locked their doors and lived in a safe neighborhood. And so for this reason, I went out and got Simply Safe. Simply Safe is an incredibly effective and easy to use home security system. And honestly, for me, a big selling point was they don't send a company to your house to set it all up. I hate that. It's totally an inconvenience. And usually you don't even know how to use the system at the end of it. So instead, they send you this really neatly packaged small kit. And then using their very easy to navigate app, you build the system yourself. And so for reference, it took me less than an hour to do this and everything worked first try. So it's very, very easy to use. Also, Simply Safe will fit any home. It's fully customizable. They have all the cameras and sensors for every type of door and window. And they have lots of cool extra stuff like water sensors, temperature sensors, smart locks for doors. And they even have this really cool outdoor camera that has a massive field of vision. It's got 8x zoom. It's got night vision. And so basically at any hour of the day, you can know what's going on outside and inside your home. And Simply Safe professionally monitors your system all the time so if anything were to happen they would call the authorities so if you want to feel safe like me and my family then go to simplysafe.com slash mr ballin if you sign up with that link you can get at least 30 percent off when you get your simply safe system all right back to the stories in 2009 15 year old christina grimmy finally caved and made her own youtube channel for years her oh my god not this one I know Christina Gimme, oh my god. I hear her story a lot now, but the first time I heard her story was on, I hate to say his name, but Shane Dawson channel when he talked about um, Christina Gimme was the first time I heard her name, so it was back in like way back in 2015 16 something like that but uh, i st i man her, her story is like so she was so amazing but her story is like could her, oh my god i'm not gonna spoil it 
friends and family had been begging her to do this because Christina had this incredible singing voice that they wanted the world to hear. But Christina had always been hesitant because she was a bit of an introvert. But that year, Christina was feeling more outgoing. And so she took the plunge. She makes this channel. And in July of that year, she uploads her first two songs. They were both cover songs and she was really proud of them. But when she uploaded them, they didn't get very many views. And so Christina probably was not very excited about making more videos. But a month later, she found herself really enjoying the song Party in the USA by Miley Cyrus. And so she was singing it all the time and humming it all the time. And so finally she said, okay, I'll just film myself covering that song. And so she records herself singing this song. She uploads it to her YouTube channel, her third video. And she thinks no one's going to see it because her first two videos, no one really saw. But this video is different. It went viral almost immediately and millions and millions of people saw it and they loved it. Christina couldn't believe it. Even though her friends and family had been telling her all along, you have this great voice, you got to share it with the world. That's different than actually seeing the results of the world saying, you're really great. We love your voice. And so she saw this huge opportunity and she began uploading more and more music to her channel and more and more of her videos went viral. Over the next four years, she amassed over 2 million subscribers on her YouTube channel. She put out her own album and she even went on tour with the mega celebrity pop star, Selena Gomez. In 2014, Christina auditioned for the TV singing competition called The Voice. This show only allows a very small number of contestants who are all incredibly talented musicians. They get screened really aggressively before the competition even starts. But despite the very intense competition she was up against, Christina still managed to finish third overall in this competition. Now, she might have been a little bit let down that she didn't finish first, but that show did wonders for her career because the judges of this competition were mega celebrity musicians and every time Christina was on TV doing her performance for the competition, the judges would be raving about how talented she was and that even if she doesn't win this competition, someone's going to sign her. She's so incredible. And then sure enough, shortly after that competition ended, Christina was signed to a major record label. But despite being considered a star by the masses, Christina still very much viewed herself as being a YouTuber first, which meant despite her mainstream popularity and fame, she continued to upload songs and vlogs to her YouTube channel because she wanted to stay connected to her fans. YouTubers often upload videos that appear very amateur, like not professionally produced. It almost looks like anybody could have picked up their phone and filmed that video. And YouTubers tend to be very candid and show their personality in their videos. And so it makes YouTubers, especially these really popular ones, seem very real and raw and relatable. Unlike traditional celebrities that are kind of outside of society, living in their mansions, living a totally elite and different lifestyle, YouTubers feel like they're your friends. And this was definitely the case with Christina. On her videos, she came off as very humble and gracious and kind and friendly, and so her fans truly adored her. By June of 2016, Christina was still growing in popularity when she was asked to be the opening act for this concert in Orlando, Florida that was happening later that month. Mm -hmm. She agreed, and then on the day of the concert, which was June 10th, she posted to her social media this kind of shout out to all of her fans, saying, hey, if you're in the Orlando, Florida area, come out to my show, and then after the show, I'm going to stick around and sign autographs and meet you guys. That night, Night, the venue where this concert was happening was jam-packed and most of the people were there for Christina, mm -hmm. not the main act. And so Christina, she goes on stage, she has this incredible performance, the main act goes on stage, and then around 10 p.m. the concert ends, at which point Christina comes back out from behind stage and went right out into the crowd and began meeting her fans and hugging them and signing autographs and taking mm -hmm. pictures. And then at 10.24 p.m., a man who was a fan of Christina's walked down from the back oh of the venue God. and kind of awkwardly gestured that he kind of wanted to get a hug oh and Christina saw God. that and so she smiled and she walked up to him she opened her arms to give him a big oh hug and when she got just a couple of feet away from him he drew a pistol and he fired four shots into her head and into her body Christina's brother Mark he was standing right nearby and he saw the attack and so he tackled the shooter and he was trying to get control of this guy but at some point the shooter managed to wriggle free and then he stood up and he kind of walked backwards until he was literally up against this wall looking at the sea of people that are totally horrified people are screaming
screaming and running and no one knows what he's going to do next and then the shooter just raises the gun puts it to his head and pulls the trigger there were people in the audience who were medically trained who rushed over to christina and they began performing cpr on her but there really wasn't anything anyone could do she would die that night at the hospital her killer was a 27 year old man named kevin loibel he like many people had become a christina super fan but his infatuation with her became a totally unhealthy obsession and when it eventually dawned on him that he most likely would never have a romantic relationship with christina he came to the conclusion that if i can't have her no one can have her and so when christina put that post out on social media asking people to come to orlando to see her show and meet her after the show he took that as an opportunity to go kill her and so he lived in st petersburg florida which is 120 miles away and so he sees this post on social media he grabs his two pistols some extra ammunition he gets a large hunting knife and then he calls a cab the cab drives him 120 miles northeast to orlando florida and then he gets into the venue with his weaponry because there weren't metal detectors and no one was frisking people as they came inside. And so he was in the back of the venue during the show. And then when it was over, he kind of lingered back, allowing other fans to go up and, you know, kind of mob Christina. And then when there was a lull and there were less people down there with her, he strode right down the aisle and he ended her life. Here is a photo of Kevin standing in the back of this venue just moments before the show came to an end. In 2009. Oh, 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 well, rest in peace, Christina Gam Grammy. Um, she was amazing. I I saw her performance on The Voice. She was amazing. I, it was when I was young. 2015, I first started watching. Well, it was after her death, but it's kind of it was sad to me to like to like. I noticed I, I it was after her death like I felt bad because I didn't even know her and after her death you know how you start YouTube recommends you videos and I saw her thumbnail I I clicked on it and it was like after her death and I just I just wish I could like seen her when she was like alive like alive like I wish she was alive and I started to like watch her videos and then she passed away and I, I watch her videos more but it's like it's like sad for me because she pa always passed away and I'm start now starting to like look at her, her videos in 2016 after her death like uh, but at, at least I'm at least we we have some memories of her at least we do have some memories memories of, of our like their loved ones like at least that why there are like internet videos out there that you can watch to like look back at at the memories like i'm so glad for that but it's it's, it's still sad it's still sad 21 year old Samantha Josephson was a senior at the University of South Carolina. She was a brilliant student who aspired to be a lawyer. Specifically, she wanted to practice international law. And so in order to do that, she needed to be able to speak other languages besides English. And so during her college years, she had really leaned into Spanish and become quite good at it rather quickly. During her college Spanish studies, one of her professors was a woman named Daniela Jaimes. Daniela very quickly recognized in Samantha that she had this incredible intellect and work ethic and just knew she was destined for greatness. In fact, she compared Samantha to Amal Clooney, who is George Clooney's wife and is considered to be one of the most famous international lawyers ever. And so just out of a general interest to see Samantha succeed, Daniela offered to Samantha to kind of be there for her if she needed anything beyond just Spanish, that she was there to help her with law school applications or if she needed advice on something or if she just had ideas she wanted 
wanted to bounce off of her, she would be available. And Samantha had taken her up on this offer, and by 2019, in Samantha's senior year, the pair had become very close, forming a sort of mentor-mentee relationship. Early that year, Samantha got accepted into her target law school, Drexel University in Pennsylvania. And so after telling her mother and father, Samantha ran to Daniela's office to tell her mentor the great news. And the two hugged and laughed and celebrated right there in the office. It was clear that everything was falling into place for Samantha, and Daniela was just very, very proud of her. A few weeks later, on March 29th, Samantha decided to go out with her friends for some drinks. Now, Samantha normally spent a lot of her time studying, even on the weekends, but since she was about a month away from graduation and she was already accepted to law school and really didn't have that much work since it was the end of the year anyways, she decided she could cut loose for that weekend. So she, along with her friends, head out to this downtown area called Five Points, which is right near the University of South Carolina, and it's an area that's full of shops and restaurants and bars, so on the weekends, it is packed with college students. Samantha and her friends hop from bar to bar, they're having a great time, and then around 2 a.m., the group found themselves in a bar called Bird Dog, and while they were there, because it was so crowded, the group of friends got separated. Now, initially, the friends were trying to reconnect with each other through texts and phone calls, but they were just really struggling to locate each other and kind of in the middle of all that Samantha decided that she was just too tired and didn't really feel like staying out any longer and so she texted her friends and let them know that she was going to head back to her room so Samantha leaves the bird dog bar on her own, she hops in an Uber and she starts driving back towards her campus several hours later after all of Samantha's friends had also finally gone home and then woke up that following morning, they realized Samantha was not in her room and so they called her, she didn't pick up they started asking around to other friends who might know where she was, but no one did. And so pretty quickly, Samantha's friends were very, very worried about her because the last they had seen her, she was leaving the bar on her own. And so they were really worried something might have happened to her. And so by 1.30 p.m. that day, on that Saturday, the day after they had gone out, they called the police and reported her missing. At the same time that Samantha was reported missing, there were these two men who were in their mid-20s that were located 70 miles to the east of the University. University of South Carolina. They were out in this forest and they were hunting for turkeys. Earlier that day, these two men, whose names were Anders and Ryan, they had had no luck actually finding these birds since so they were getting frustrated. And so by the afternoon, they had split up and were kind of combing this forest on their own to see if they would have more luck solo. And so Ryan, he posted up next to their truck, which was parked on this dirt road that was butted up against the edge of this big forest. And Ryan, with his binoculars, was scanning out across this field that butted up against the tree line of the forest and he was kind of scanning the tree line but he still was having no luck finding any turkeys and then Anders he actually had walked into that forest which was right next to Ryan and he was just kind of walking around looking for the birds as well but he too was still having no luck and so around 4 30 p.m. Anders who's the one in the forest he finally is just ready to admit defeat and leave empty-handed and so he turns around and begins walking out of the forest in the direction of Ryan. And so at this point, he's maybe one or 200 feet away from Ryan, but the trees are very thick and they can't really see each other. And so Anders is just kind of walking in that direction. He's not looking for birds anymore, so he's not scouting around. He's just kind of looking straight ahead. And as he's walking, something catches his eye off to the left behind some trees. It was pretty far away, but he instinctively turned and looked, and he couldn't really tell what it was. It wasn't a turkey, but it wasn't anything that should have been in the forest. And so he decided he would go get a better look. And so he turned away from Ryan and went left and started cutting through the trees and he kept walking until his view of this thing was no longer obscured by trees and when he got a full look at this thing that had caught his attention he stopped where he was he yelled for Ryan who couldn't see him but he yelled for him to come into the woods and look at this and as Ryan is running into the forest to see what's going on Anders is pulling his phone out and calling the police when the police finally show up they find Anders and Ryan and they're very shaken up and they're sitting on the back of their truck on that dirt road where Ryan had been. And so the police pull up to them, they speak to them and get directions of how to get to what they saw inside of the forest. And then the police officers walk into the forest, they follow the directions, and before long, they're looking down at Samantha. 14 hours before her body was discovered, Samantha left the bird dog bar and walked out front where there's lots of other students. And she walked to this corner of this road right in front of her and she hailed an Uber. 
and then the Uber car pulls up, she hops inside, and then the car backs up and drives away. Except that was not an Uber car. That was a car driven by a 24-year-old named Nathaniel Rowland, who was not an Uber driver. He was a guy who had been driving around five points all night, presumably to try to trick people into getting into his vehicle, believing it was an Uber. And finally, his plan had worked. He had pulled in right in front of Samantha. She thought it was her car. She climbed in without question. And then once she was inside, she couldn't get out again because the doors were child locked. There was no way to open them unless they were opened from the outside. Now, initially, Samantha wouldn't have noticed this. She just sat in the back seat, the car backed up, it started driving, except it didn't drive towards her campus. It drove the opposite direction. And the drive from this bar to the campus was only a couple of minutes long. And so even if she wasn't really paying attention, she would have recognized fairly quickly they were going the wrong way because, again, she's expecting to get dropped off within a couple of minutes. Now, we don't know what actually happened inside that car in terms of of how Samantha actually handled this realization that he was taking her the wrong way. We don't know if she confronted him. We don't know if she tried to open the door and then realized it was child locked. We just don't know. All we know is that Nathaniel drove Samantha to some isolated area, most likely 70 miles to the east, near that forested area where her body was found. And then once he parked wherever he was, Nathaniel pulled out a knife and then leapt into the back seat of his car where Samantha was trapped. And he stabbed her 120 times. And then after he was finished stabbing her, it would take Samantha over 10 minutes to finally die. Within hours of dumping her body, in the forest, Nathaniel was posting these normal posts on Facebook of him in front of his car and regular status updates, and he was having very normal interactions with his family and his friends, as if he was completely unaffected by this horrible crime he had just committed. Nathaniel was arrested within 24 hours of the discovery of Samantha's body. While he never offered any motive for the crime, it's believed he simply decided that night he was going to go kill someone, and so he just began prowling around for a victim and unfortunately Samantha was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Nathaniel was ultimately convicted of her murder and was sentenced to life in prison. Here are the final images of Samantha as she climbs into Nathaniel's car. Oh my god. See that why you don't never leave your friends alone. Never leave your friends alone. So that's going to do it, guys. Never if you found the secret in today's alone. episode, let us know just, in the comments section what it is and where you found it. So give us the timestamp. And if you're the first to do that, we'll pin you at the top of the comments. Oh, I'm done. I'm done with these videos. Like, it's just too disturbing and too sad. But no matter what, if you're a woman or a man, girl or boy, never leave your friends alone. Just, just don't do it. Just don't do it. Oh, uh, stuff like this can happen. It doesn't matter if you're a girl or a boy, a man or a woman. Things like this can happen to you too. So, um, just leave it at that. And make sure to, like, look out after yourselves. Because today's society is dangerous now. It's dangerous. We're dangerous. Like, it's not just children. It's not, it's not just women. It's not just men. It's everybody's in danger and you just gotta look out out for yourselves just look out for yourselves and just 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 stay safe just stay safe and have fun because it's almost halloween and you guys i'm not going halloween i gotta work i gotta work so unfortunately i won't be able to go trick-or-treating and stuff like that but I still gotta look out for myself because I'll be working. So anyways, everybody look out for yourselves and stay safe. And to, tomorrow I gotta go to a funeral. My aunt passed away, so I gotta go to a funeral. So I won't be able to, like, have time to, like, make these videos. So that's why I'm making it now since I, like, have the time to do it right now. And today I had to, like, work 8 to 4 and I just scoff and I've been, like doing these videos for you guys so you guys can like have something to watch so anyways mr ball and make sure to subscribe to mr ballin because he is good at this and thank you all for watching and make sure to subscribe like and comment and thank you all for watching and stay safe and be careful and have fun